I am a. <laughs> okay. Greetings, everyone. And I have decided to do a second video describing to you guys some ideas that I have come up with. And get away from there, cat. But. I, since I've started a new sleeping schedule for myself, not that any of you care to hear this, but I'm going to tell you anyway, I decided to do a, no, a new sleeping schedule for myself because I haven't been, because I hadn't been getting the proper amount of sleep. However, this is due to the fact that I now have a brand new mattress that is not rickety and makes it feel like I'm just straight sleeping on my box springs. And it's because I'm getting more REM, as they call it, or rapid eye movement. According to what I've been told, that means that I'm getting a much deeper and much fulfilling sleep. And it actually works because I've actually, my mind is a lot sharper. So I've come up with some ideas ever since I've started this new thing that actually you guys might like. Okay. I thought of at least a couple of Green Lantern stories, or at least a couple of Green Lantern spinoff stories. And I'm going to lay it on, y'all. First one is Carol Ferris, or I could, or I would just talk, call the title of the book The Star Sapphire. And I thought about calling it The Violet Light of Love. And this is basically going to be a book that's kind of like Green Lantern Corps, or even the individual Green Lantern comic. It's going to focus more on Carol Ferris and the Zamronians than it would than it would anything else. Hell, I could even do a spin-off called the Violet Lantern Corps actually or the Star Sapphire Brigade or something like that. You get the point. So there's one idea for you guys. Another idea that I thought about was doing a spin-off on the Yellow Lantern Corps. And I also thought about doing, and also thought about doing a Sinestro storyline. However, this would be set in an alternate universe of Green Lantern, where the Sinestro Corps are actually allies of the Green Lantern Corps, that they are not quote unquote villains, and that they use their, and that they use their ability to spread fear, to actually strike it. Oh, they would basically be kind of like the intergalactic an intergalactic mercenary version of the Punisher. They would only go after bad guys. And Sinestro would butt heads with Hal Jordan and the Guardians, but that they would that pretty much that technically in the eyes of the Green Lantern Corps and the Guardians they would be evil but yet in this alternate version the Guardians kind of allow the Yellow Lantern Corps to exist based on the premise that they can only kill, that they can only kill and bring order if it is, say, something like the like the Red Lantern Corps or basically a criminal terrorist group that really cannot be put through the justice system. In other words, they can't be redeemed. They can't make anything else of themselves. That justice keeps failing time and time again. It's basically the intergalactic double jeopardy rule. And if these guys still keep doing terrorist acts, then basically the Sinestro Corps would be kind of like a, a Black Ops version of the the Green Lantern Corps. They would be like a mercenary group that would basically almost be sent in to take them out. Now, I realize that this sounds very stupid and very flawed, but it's just a basic idea. Just something I tinkered around with. And also, I would have one that would go into Sinestro's backstory called called Sinestro, The Power of Fear, or something like that have a really catchy title and it would basically be a solo book for Sinestro so there's another idea one I actually thought about and I think you guys are really gonna like this concept I thought of one called it would either be called uh, it would be called Green Lantern 281 2814 or or Tales of the Green Lantern Corps, Sector 2814. Now, the premise of this concept in my mind is 
that it would focus from the very first Green Lantern that was that was assigned to Sector 2814 to say like Hal Jordan and Kyle Rayner so it would basically be a history of all the different Green Lanterns that took over Sector 2814 and that by far is probably one of the best Green Lantern ideas that I've actually come up with and I think that it would be actually be pretty cool especially for hardcore fans and for casual fans that kinda wanna go deep into the mythology of Green Lantern that they would kind of get to understand you know our home sector our sector which is two eight which conveniently is two eight one four for those of you that are watching this video and don't know anything about the Green Lantern comics I just think that it would be a really cool and interesting idea and you could have many different stories for many different of the lanterns that existed back then you could even do a couple of stories with Hal Jordan, Kyle Rayner, Ab and Sir, all the ones that were protectors of 2814 you know, John Stewart. I mean, I could go down the list, but I think that, but I think that that's a pretty cool idea in its own. Um, one idea that I did actually share in a Skype conversation with Mount Vernon Kid, Deadpool Zilla, Ziploc Gory, and F. W. Waller, and I thought about doing my own alternate take because I was very annoyed by the fact that Bucky Barnes was killed and killed in in Fear Itself number four. I wanted to change that. And after the trial of Captain America, when he's put in the Russian gulag, he's basically Steve Rogers assembles a black ops group against the president's orders. And, or, or at least with the president's orders, blah, 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 you get the point. Secret black ops mission, kind of like that secret invasion that Nick Fury did on that Varia. And his his team would assemble of Black Widow, himself, Wolverine, and Spider Woman, Jessica Drew. And they would break Bucky out. And Bucky would have to face Sin, who has become the new Red Skull. And she devises a plan to further frame Bucky by launching a nuclear warhead at the UN. And Bucky has to stop her while still dressed as Captain America. And one of the big key things is that Bucky stops being Captain America. He feels that he just cannot do it. And even when Steve persistently tells him, you know, Buck, I think that you can do it, and he's, he just says no. No, Steve, I can't. He goes, but there's one identity that I'm better suited for. And on this podium with confetti and a celebration and whatnot, you see John Walker. And <coughs> you see him just sitting there looking over uh, on the podium and just smiling. And then Obama, yes, I will have Obama as the president in this book, just to keep with current times. And Obama would introduce Bucky as the new, wait for it, U.S. agent. Yes, I would make Buck at the end of this. Uh, at the end of this, this like mini comic book hardback cover book series called the Ballad of Bucky Barnes. We would see Bucky, at least for the last time, as Captain America, and then at the end of the book, he's the new U.S. agent. Which then I would do a mini series, kind of like Steve Rogers Super Soldier, and I would call it Bucky Barnes U.S. Agent. And this would be basically where Bucky is both is where Bucky is both still a member of Avengers Prime, but he's also a member of Steve Rogers Secret Avengers. So I would basically make Bucky kind of a I would I would make him very much more useful in the Marvel Universe as like the Black Ops version of Captain America, if you want to call it that. But then again I guess the Secret Avengers does fill that. But you guys get the point of where I'm going with this. So I don't really feel that I need to elaborate any further than that. So I've got that. Then I've been kicking around many other ideas. I was kicking around an idea actually this morning for a story called Superman Our Man of Steel. And it would not be told on the Man of Steel himself, but it would be told through the eyes of friends and citizens of Metropolis. 
Now, this is a very unique idea because I thought, you know, there would be we could go to each of the many different members. We could have a story being told from Batman's perspective, one being told from Wonder Woman's perspective, John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, a few JLA members who briefly, you know, fought alongside Superman. You could even have like Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, Perry White. You could even have like Lex Luthor, Metallo. You get the point. Just all the many different characters that have worked alongside, fought against, or even, you know, even citizens of Metropolis that just conveniently happened to be there when Superman was battling a supervillain. And just them telling all these different stories, you know, from their perspective, like, yeah, you know, th this one time I saw, I saw Superman fighting Parasite, and man, it was like a knockdown, drag out brawl. I mean, Superman picked up a car, he busted him over the, over the head, and then Parasite just ripped it in half and went, and just grabbed him and, you know, something like that. I mean, there, there's just many different, I mean, I think that it's a pretty interesting idea, but it's a story idea that I kind of scrapped because really, as you could tell, it would be very difficult to try to not, to try to do multiple characters at once and make it seem kind of like viable because I am still kind of somewhat a quote-unquote fledgling writer so I feel that doing an advanced story like that would prove too difficult and overwhelming but I haven't really thrown it away it's still an idea that I'm going to hold on to because I think that it's a pretty cool idea because it'll focus on Superman but it won't be told from Superman's perspective it'll be how other people perceive the Man of Steel um, also, I actually came up with a really weird crossover idea, and it's basically going to be set, it's going to be Connor Hawk as Green Arrow versus the Predator, and it would be set in the Amazon jungle, and basically Connor, one of his explosive arrows would conveniently go off as his equipment is dropped and it would basically blow up half of his equipment so Connor has to basically make his own makeshift bow and arrows and slowly but surely he has to set traps and eventually he disarms the predator little by little and I want at the end of this book to be a big climactic fight like a big hand-to-hand -hand combat fight between Connor and the predator and I actually want Vixen, I want Vixen, Red Arrow, and Black Lightning to be there as, like, support, but yet they won't do anything. You know, Vixen basically says, you know, this is his fight, let him, you know, do it, and then just, it's one of those kinds of deals. Like, it's the, you know, like, I want it to be a story of where Connor basically ends up you know he's you know I want at the beginning of the book Connor to say, well, you know you don't know what it's it's like. Well, you know I'm much better than it, you know than you are. You know you're only half the man that you were back then. And so I wanted to in my mind I guess to set up a story where Connor kind of starts to understand what his dad went through and what inspired him to become Green Arrow. And then at the end of the book, when Connor goes back and he's in the medical bay, I want there to be this kind of sentimental scene where Connor just begrudgingly admits to his father, he goes, you know, I actually understand now what you went through to become, you know, to become Green Arrow. Like, I, I sincerely doubt that it'll play out that way because they don't portray Connor as being touchy-feely. But at the same time, I'm not going to throw that scene completely out of the story because I think that it would be a very meaningful lesson for for not only Connor's character, but I also feel that, you know, maybe it's just me, but I'm a happy ending kind of guy. Like, I like stories that, the like, I like stories to end on a good note, or at least somewhat of a good note. Um... One story, I think one great story that I would really, I think one great crossover that I would really love to see, and it's going to sound very goofy, and I'm sure a lot of you are going to be like, what the hell, but The Incredible Hulk and Savage Dragon. 
Yes, Savage Dragon and the Hulk would actually team up, but they would actually team up in a very interesting fashion. Because there would basically because now what would I have the, who would I have them face? Uh that's actually a tough one. Basically, I guess I would have a plot that would involve the leader and one of Savage Dragon's enemies. But for right now, it's just the basic, oh, here's the title and here's the characters kind of deal. So you guys can fill in the gaps if you want to for that and throw some ideas my way. But I just felt that I should mention that kind of crossover, see if anybody f thought it was as goofy as I was. But... Um, what was another one that I had, had actually thought about? Actually, believe it or not, I, I am actually tinkering around with the idea of a Spawn Ghost Rider crossover. And that, actually, Spawn, Ghost Rider, and just to make it completely over the top, put Death, put Death from Darksiders 2. You could have the you could have the the Horseman Death from Darksiders. You could have Ghost Rider from the Marvel Universe, and you could actually have you could actually have Spawn from Image, and you could have a possibly a brief cameo by Etrigan. We'll see. Hell, I mean I I'm tinkering around with many ideas. There could be a quadruple crossover. Etrigan the Demon. Ghost Rider, Spawn, Death from Darksiders. Let's see. Uh, I'm getting tongue tied here. Okay. Death from Darksiders, Spawn, Ghost Rider, Etrigan the Demon, and Jackie Estacado, the Darkness. There we go. I don't know why I got tongue tied with that. And pretty much you could put, like, all the demonic high overlords in there and one of them would actually be Malbosia and another one would be Beelzebub and basically there would also be and basically all these characters would be fighting and also Blackheart and Mephisto would be involved so it would be like all the demonic Satan or high or like high level demon characters would be facing off against them and I just think that this would and as over the top as this is I think this would be a very kick-ass, like, idea to throw around. Um, I actually have another video game theory, but one that I kind of thought was a little too weird that wouldn't be able to, to work. But I'll throw it out there anyway. Oh, excuse me. Marvel. Marvel and Marvel 2099 Chaos, you know, Chaos Theory or something like that. Um, or Dimensional Crisis. And basically what this is, this was a weird, kooky game concept where basically I make, and it's, and it's funny because Edge of Time kind of takes this a little bit. It's basically where the... It's basically where the 2099 version of Thanos ends up throwing his version of the of the of the infinity gauntlet through time before the heroes could get it because this one would be able to and basically what he ends up doing is that he goes to the real Thanos and all in the six one six universe and basically in other words it starts causing and to basically shorten it all up is that the six one six Thanos gets both Gauntlets, fa dimensional fabric, tears start happening, the regular Marvel Universe and the 2099 Universe start merging. And so it's it's up to you playing as like Wolverine and various members of the X-Men 2099. Um, you could actually have, you could actually have Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099 teaming up, um, Punisher, um, Frank Castle, the Punisher, would basically end up facing off against Punisher 2099. Um, you could have actually, I mean, it, it would just be one of those like crazy weird like games. And as you can tell, this is why I kind of scrapped it because 
trying to come up with the idea to make this sound to make this sound would not really have worked. But it's still a good attempt. I mean, I would have merged Hulk, Hulk 2099, would have had Ravage 2099. I would have had a few good guy characters, and then I would have had Frank Castle fight his 2099 counterpart since he was technically a villain. And he later worked for Doctor Doom. So, there you go. A little interesting tidbit that you guys could can go with. Um... I mean, yeah, that's that's actually, I guess, it. That's pretty much all the ideas that I really feel like sharing right now. If I come up with any others or I find any others from the vaults of Steve, as I like to call it, then I'll let you guys know. But yeah, with that video game idea, it's just, I like it, but the way that I executed it is just, it's stupid. I'm sorry, I gotta call it. It's a very stupid idea good concept stupid idea at the same time but then again we all have stupid ideas and some happen to be okay this one was actually mediocre at best um also oh wait actually real quick I actually thought of my own of my own DC comic book and it's called and it was actually oh wait on second thought actually no I'll save that for the next video I'll actually save that for the next video actually you know what on second thought screw it alright actually you know what screw it I'm gonna go for it um I decided to come up since Gail Simone's Secret Six is actually ending. I kept tinkering around with the idea of, you know what, if I made my own Secret Six team, what would I call it? And I decided to call it the new Secret Six. And my choices would be Deathstroke, Metallo, Hush, Cheetah, Barbara and Minerva's version of Cheetah, Killer Frost, and it may sound like a bit of a random choice, maybe not, but Silver Banshee. So there you go. Three guys, three girls. I think Deathstroke would be a very cool choice. A lot of pe a lot of you may disagree and, and I'm fine with that. It's just an idea. Metallo may seem like an odd choice. As would Thomas Elliot. As would any of the any of the ladies but I just think that it would be fun to kinda of have this version of the secret six have three have three females and three males and to me I think that they would it would be pretty interesting to see the team dynamic among uh, among all six of them hell you could even have a thing where they actually battle the original secret six you know Catman, Ragdoll, Bane and all of them I think it'd be fun, but those are my ideas. These are all the story ideas that I actually propose to share, and also they're the only ideas that I've actually come up with that are new thus far, or are old ideas even that I feel like sharing. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do at this point, is that I'm going to go plot out some other ideas and I'm gonna get back to you guys also I already know who my next lesser known but awesome heroes are gonna be and they are going to be two females Mount Vernon Kid, Deadpool, Zilla, Ziploc, Gory, and FW Waller already know who they are but I think you guys are gonna like them. I think you guys are honestly going to like the characters that I've set in place. So, not really much else that I can say here except 
Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like a lot of my ideas. And don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff.